So in the setting of relapse, uh, so what we think is going on, uh, we think that some of the autoimmunity that was involved in causing the disease in the first place actually is acting up again in the sense that it's starting. We, so we control this autoimmune attack uh, with the first round of immunosuppression. It, it gets controlled for uh, a while, and eventually the, 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 the autoreactive T cells do come back. So the rationale is to, if they responded the first time around, uh, we would then repeat that course of immunosuppression to, again, address the issue of autoreactive T cells attacking the bone marrow. And about 50 to 60 percent of patients do respond when you do repeat immunosuppression in the relapse uh, setting. The treatment resistance uh, refractoriness uh, scenario, uh, we think we have, we, we, we have some hypotheses. That when you do research, you have to think about possibilities. And the hypotheses that we think are plausible, and this is what actually formed the basis for developing large programs in terms of protocols, clinical protocols, which were basically two things. Uh, one was that we were probably not addressing the immune pathophysiology of the autoimmunity, so we think this is of a disease, we think, but I mean the disease is, a, is caused idiopathic acquired aplastic anemia by an autoimmune uh, insult to the bone marrow with several dysregulations of, of, of T cells and cytokines and proteins attacking the stem cells. Uh, and when somebody does not respond, we thought that we were not getting rid of this autoimmune T cell population in a sufficient way that eliminated them and allowed the bone marrow to recover. So that's why several protocols were designed with that in mind to increase immunosuppression giving more drugs, adding third drugs like uh, serolimus and uh, macophenolate and, 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 or giving more potent drugs like uh, uh, alentuzumab, but that didn't pan out. So we started thinking of maybe there's a different possibility that maybe it's not the autoimmunity that we haven't controlled, but maybe there's just not enough stem cells or stem cell reserve for the patient to recover from, even after we control the autoimmune attack. Because again, horse ATG, which is the best regimen, is really not that immunosuppressive. It's, it's not that potent of an immunosuppressant. So we, we moved gears and thought about stimulating the bone marrow. Now, historically, giving drugs to stimulate the bone marrow were negative in aplastic anemia, so there was some hesitancy in terms of a TPO agonist or a thrombopoietin receptor agonist like l to be effective, but it was very effective as a single agent in refractory patients, which gives some credence to the notion that by stimulating the bone marrow with a thrombopoietin receptor agonist, marrow function can improve, can improve and counts can get better. Now keep in mind that l can also have some immunomodulatory effects. So there might be other mechanisms that are in play here helping the bone marrow to work in a, in a healthier fashion.